Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. You can see in front of me here a brand new Google Home Hub. This is the charcoal version of the product. I'm going to get it fully set up. And when I say fully, I mean fully. Basically everything that you can think of here to get your Google Home Hub set up in your home. I'm going to run you through tons of functionality today and show you basically how to set it up entirely. Now, down below in the description, the this video is indexed. So you can go ahead and you can jump ahead to certain topics. You can see certain things. If you wanna skip back, you can go back and re-see certain things. So go ahead, use that description down below to get you around this video, to get you to the different parts of the setup process that you could be struggling with. So hopefully this helps you all, but let's get started with the Google Home Hub. All right, now in order to set up a Google Home Hub, the first thing obviously that we have to do is go ahead and get it unboxed. So let's bring it over here and we're gonna start the process for getting this opened up. Now, what I'll tell you right off the bat is there's not a lot to this product in terms of its packaging. You know, you have the Google Home Hub itself and I mean, that's, that's it right there. And behind it, you just go ahead you lift up the box here and you can see in there we have a little starter manual. I'm not even going to show you that here today. And then you also have an AC adapter. So let me get that opened up. So in the back of the packaging here, you can see the little arrows. They're basically telling you how to get this film off your Google Home Hub. So don't fight with it too much, but start from that perspective. Now, one of the first questions I always get on these videos is, is the adapter 100 to 240 volts, i.e. is it ready for a European market or any market with the 220 voltage there? The answer is yes, this adapter is ready to go. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in. But the other thing you're gonna wanna know that's a full wingspan for me. That's about six feet in length. So on the, the Google Home Hub here itself, what you're seeing are the ambient EQ sensors and a number of sensors basically here on the front. You also on the back have a mute microphone switch here. So pushing that back and forth will mute the microphone. And then down here, this is actually your power port. So that's what you have. So in terms of the device itself, let me show you a few things here. So right up at the top, this is an ambient EQ light sensor. These two on either side are actually far field microphones. This is a seven inch display. Okay. So that's measured kind of crosswise here, but also on the back, you also have the mute microphone capability. And then way down here, you have the power port. So that's what you're plugging your power uh, adapter into there. And then this is actually the speaker for the device itself. So let's go ahead, get this plugged in and we'll get her working. Welcome to Google Home. To get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. All right, so that's basically all you get. You get a little uh, intro there very quickly once you've powered it up, and then you've gotta go and get the Google Home application on an iOS, an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android phone or tablet. Now, if you're not seeing that application there, you probably got too old of a device. So I'm going into the Google Home application. I'm on a Wi-Fi here that's in my home. So you do already have to be connected to Wi-Fi, and you'll notice that set up one device at the top of the application, and you you can tell on the screen it's basically telling me I can go ahead and set up the device name is in the bottom and that's how you're going to identify it in the set of Wi-Fi uh, connections or Wi-Fi uh, services that are out there in a second I'll explain what that means here you could use the add button here on the screen as well to go ahead and get this added if you didn't see that set up one device but let's go ahead hit that set up one device now we're choosing which home it's in. Now, I have a couple of homes here, and what I'll tell you is that 
people in general are only going to have one when they set up the device. So just keep that in mind. If you have multiple, you're going to have to choose what that is here. Reasons to have multiple homes. So say you wanted to split off some devices for your children to use, you could go ahead and do that. So now it's looking for devices and obviously it's going to find this. Now your initial setup process might have been a little bit different if you never had the Google Home application. You will have had to sign in, get an account. That's really the only difference here. Answer a couple of basic questions. So the Google Home Hub here is what I'm choosing. Again, that was the name of the device and now it's just going through a connection process. So what it's going to do here is it's going to connect it to Wi-Fi credentials that I've already saved in here you would have to input those credentials if you haven't saved them to Google. So I'm going to show you that here in a second, but right now it's asking if I see the code. Now obviously the code's there, so I'm just tapping yes. Do I wanna help improve Google Home Hub? Send them statistics. Hey, if you've got network bandwidth in your home, go ahead, do this, it helps other people. I'm going to say no thanks because I've got eight of these things in my home. Now, the Google Home Hub for me was manufactured in a different country. You don't have to worry about that. They're just kind of telling you Wi-Fi is different in different countries. All right, continuing on here, what they're asking me to do is basically pick a room and this will give it an initial name. So I'm going to choose either to create a new room if I have different names than they've kind of given me here, or I can go ahead and choose one. This one's going to end up in my bedroom because that's kind of the place that I would expect a lot of people to put their Google Home Hubs is in their bedroom. Now, here's the Wi-Fi network choice. You go ahead, you choose your Wi-Fi network. I'm going to choose the one that's already chosen and it's making that connection to Wi-Fi right now. Now, if you did struggle for any reason getting your Wi-Fi set up, here's a couple of things you can do. There's not a ton that Google's going to kind of give out here or tell you you can do. Uh, my device is going through an update, so just keep that in mind here as I'm, as I'm talking. But what I'll tell you is that you need an iOS 9.1 or greater or an Android 4.4 or greater device to get that connection process to occur correctly. Another thing that you're going to want to make sure, you know, if you've struggled here, get this a little closer to your router just for that initial setup. Thereafter, it should be okay. And you're also not going to want a ton of devices sitting right next to it, you know, that are Wi-Fi broadcasters or Wi-Fi capable as well. So if you have a bunch of Wi-Fi devices on the 2.4 gigahertz band sitting right next to this, that could interfere. Some other things that, and, and Google tells you this right on their support website, they tell you basically restart your router, restart the wireless, so turn off that wireless, uh, basically the signal from your router, turn that on, turn it back on, and as it's coming back up, you know, you might have dumped some of the items off of your Wi-Fi network and that might just help you to get this initial connection going on. If you are struggling with that, the other thing you can do is switch the connection to a five gigahertz uh, set up basically with your router. Now that would allow you then to set this device up as a five gigahertz. So it is a dual band device. Now, just a couple of other things. In general, network congestion is going to be your biggest issue, but finally, if you really are struggling here and you can't get this connected, support.google.com, head there, have a quick chat, let them walk you through the troubleshooting steps and I think it'll become fairly clear. So now my device has gone through, it's downloaded the patch from the internet, it's now updating there, so we're going to get a patch basically pushed into this or it's being installed into it right now. So that's the latest cast firmware and that's what you want here. So we can go ahead and continue the setup process. All right, now the download and the update is done on there. I didn't have to wait for that, but just because I was explaining a few things about Wi-Fi connections there, I wanted to just wait that out, let it finish. Now, we can continue with the setup process. We're setting up the Google Assistant next, so this is what powers the Google Home, the Google Home Hub, the Mini, every device basically uh, from Google with that Google Home name right now. So what they wanna tell you is they have some commercial relationships, they will uh, basically 
share some data that they you give them through the use of the Google Assistant. So you have to keep that in mind. You can also manage some of those privacy settings later. Uh, the next button is really all you can hit here. You can learn a little bit more if you wanna get a little more detailed with the information from Google. Now the next component is called voice match and voice match allows you to get some personalized results. So what I'll tell you in general is you do want to do this and then we can set up other people in your household later. We can invite them and let them use voice match. There's certain things they can do and with voice match you're going to get access to things like calendars, utilizing that and other personal type of information you can go ahead and get. So the voice match is a good thing. Thing. Now I've already set up voice match so I don't have to set that up again but all it is is basically you using the wake word and they walk you through what you have to use two or three times here actually I think it's four times they ask you to use the wake word and that teaches the voice assistant your voice. Next is the actual personal results. This is something, again, that I think you wanna turn on. Calendar, contacts, reminders, and there's much more as you go here through utilizing your Google Home Hub. So again, I would just say agree to this. You can turn it off later in general, but this really gives a lot of power to that device between you and the device as well. Next up is choosing the assistant's voice. It's voice one or voice two at the start here. I'm going to show you later how you can go ahead and do more, or choose more voices. Now you have to enter in your address. You could say not now, you don't have to put it in, but enter in your address, that gives the Google Home Hub the ability to give you directions to and from locations when you're at home using the device. Next up is streaming music services, and these are basically tied to your account. If they're the Google Play Music or YouTube Music, those are tied to the account you used at the start of the process here. So you don't wanna use two different accounts necessarily, but you can click the pluses here to link different accounts. So you can see I'm linking the Deezer account, or I could if I'd like, but I've already linked Spotify and Google Play Music and YouTube, so I don't need to do that. But you just hit the plus, put in your credentials to that music service and they're now linked and connected. Now you do have to pick a default music service. So you pick the one you wanna use the most, but when you just ask for music to play, that's the one that's going to start by default going forward. So I'm going to leave it on Google Play Music and we're just going to go forward. Duo calling. Again, this is something I've already set up, but if you download the Duo application on your phone, sign up for an account, again, use kind of the same Google account here, and it will use your contacts and allow you to make video calls. Now, the funny thing about the Google Home Hub is it doesn't have a camera on board, so you can't make video calls with it, but you can see the video of other people and you will be making an audio duo call. So you'll be able to speak to them and see them if they are on a device with a camera, so like a phone, and you're able to answer and make those phone calls from this device. So you wanna be able to hit use duo here and you go through a little bit of a verification process again. Now, next up is what's called ambient mode and I'm going to tell you to just kind of skip through this unless you're using Google Photos naturally right now. You could go into that and just use it. What I'm going to do is turn on a full screen clock for right now and then later I'll show you how to connect it to Facebook and, and use those albums or your Google Photos or the um, kind of the native art gallery that they have always included on Chromecast or cast enabled devices. So now I just have to choose a clock. I'm going to choose something very plain just to not play with the, the light on the screen too much. And now I, it's just reviewing all of those setup things that I've done already, making sure that everything's good there. If I had to, I can tap on any of these components and go back and go ahead and make adjustments to what I've already set up. And again, there's, there's really nothing here that you can't go back on and make adjustments later in the application. So don't be too panicked here if you're choosing something that you're a little unsure of. So we're just gonna go ahead, hit the next, 
and now we're ready and ready to get started. So as soon as I hit continue here, there's going to be, uh, basically there's a blue button on there, actually it's already there, it says finish setup, and when I press that, I get a little demo video. So let's start that, I'm not going to run you through that whole demo video here today. Actually, sorry, before that, they're just going to tell me a little bit about the devices. So there's the ambient EQ light sensor, there's the mic uh, mute switch in the back, the volume controls, which I didn't show you earlier, are on the back on, basically if you're, if you're facing the device, they're on the right hand side. So continuing to move on, that's it. And now if I hit that finish setup button, here comes the setup video, or the startup video. Welcome to your Google Home Hub. It has the Google Assistant built in. Hi, how can I help? So you can use your voice to get help at a glance. Check it out. Jumpstart your day with a personalized routine. Just say, good morning. For the weather, your calendar, so the first thing I want to do is show you some of the interface in the application and then we'll move to through kind of the voice control or different things there. Now the home right up at the top you can see I have two homes set up in my home mostly for demos here but again if you wanted to split out your home your smart home devices you could and then move them between the homes and I'll show you how to do that later. There's also the off and the on button so I can turn off things that are already connected. Now, if this is the first time you've set up a Google Home Hub, well, you don't have anything connected there. So, you know, what you can do is this is by room that you've created in your home. So as we set up rooms and we put devices in those rooms, you can turn off the lights per room. The next thing is the on button, which is just the reverse of the off button. Obviously, you're going to be able to turn on all the lights in the different rooms. You can kind of break them up in any way you like. Now, play is the next component. Now. Play brings up basically all your groups, so you create multi-room audio groups or multi-speaker groups, and then it brings all your devices up. So this allows you to pick each one, and since I chose this one as bedroom display, that's actually what's here for me to choose. So if I just hit play, and now I tap on bedroom speaker, it's now going to start music from my default music service. Now you saw I was able to actually adjust the volume right there. So this is the interface that comes right up when I've started it here. I can also stop casting, open the app. You can see I can move back and forth in the song and I can pause and there's also an equalizer here. So if I wanna hear a little more of the bass sound, I can go ahead and do that and a little less treble. And I'll tell you the Google Home Hub is a little higher on that mid range uh, component of the speaker. So that's kind of generally how I play these ones as well. So little trick for you there. Now there's all the settings which I'm going to go into later. That's the, the gear icon there. We're gonna go into that a little bit later, but for now I'm going to pause the music and we're gonna move on. Now the next button to move down to here is our broadcast button and this allows us to basically send messages from any other device in the home to all of the devices in the home. So go ahead, hit the broadcast and then whatever comes up on the, when it comes up on the screen to speak, that's what you're going to broadcast. So let's go ahead and do that. What's the message? Does anyone need eggs? Does anyone need eggs? Now in the very near future, you're going to be able to respond to that and I can actually do that broadcast from out of the home if I just have the Google Assistant application on my phone. So that's really important stuff actually going forward. You're able to tell your Google Assistant and I can show you how to do that here. Just in the Google Assistant application, I can go ahead and say broadcast. Broadcast. What's the message? Hello, everyone. Okay, broadcasting now. Hello, everyone. 
So there you go. That's really it in terms of broadcasting today. But again, it's going to change in the near future where you're going to be able to interact with your Google Home Hub. And by the time you see this, that feature might be there where you can just simply respond to the person and they will get a transcription and a voice message of what you said back. So that's where you can ask about, do you need some milk? Does anyone need anything? I'm at the grocery store and get an actual response back. Now the next button is add and that's a bit of a longer uh, discussion here so I'm going to leave that for the second and the next thing is settings which again is a longer discussion so let's leave that for a minute but as we scroll down the other connected or smart home devices are here in the basically in the interface I can tap on any room so this is arranged by room and there are the devices in that room and then I can tap on the gear go in and I can choose devices delete the room go into each device and its settings if I'd like. Um, so there you can see I can choose the devices again and I could go and I could add something and that will put that device in that room. So, you know, really quick navigation or capability of changing things in and out of rooms and you can also see the on and off buttons here on the interface. I also have those kinds of things here on the Google Home Hub. So again, let me take you through that smart home menu. On any screen, you swipe down from the top and you can see three sections, lights, media, and broadcast. Now, into lights, you can see by room and then you can go into each room. You can manage them all together or you can go into the new lights menu here. This is brand new as this video comes out actually and you can manage each light independently. You can also go into each light by tapping on it change the color if it's a color bulb so you can see as I tap on this the light actually in the room changes color so you know there's a lot of capability here of moving back and forth between your lights and other home control elements you're going to see the Harmony Hub a little later so keep that in mind but back into these rooms here you can go into all the lights in your home if you'd like you can turn them on and off of course and do all the same things you did before. Now there is a view rooms button up at the top right once you swipe down and that looks just like your application interface. So you can scroll right down through your rooms, tap on the left to switch between rooms and then you can go into even your Google Home Hub or other Google Home media device and use that there or that part of it. Now the media button you can go through all the different devices that you have in your home. You can go in and start music straight from there if you'd like. Okay, music from Google Play Music. Playing on bedroom display. The last button in the menu here is the broadcast function, which allows you to broadcast to all your devices. That's the functionality right now. We talked about it a little earlier in the video though, but it does allow you to send a message to all the devices in your home today. What's the message? Hello, how's it going? Okay, broadcasting now. Now moving down the list, you can see the ability to play music on Google Home Minis, on Google Home Hubs, on Google Home devices, anything that's Google Home, you can basically hit play on and it will start music based on your default music service and kind of what you listen to around this time. That's all kind of chosen for you. You can see the different sensors that I have throughout the home and again you can change the home and you can change the room and you can see that I've already linked Samsung smart things so that's something I'll show you a little bit later here how to link some of your services and get them working now the the last kind of component down at the very bottom are your groups and your groups are speaker groups that again I'll show you when we go to that add button here in a second so let's continue through the application though now so in general the discover page here has your ambient mode pictures everything that's being shown on your other cast enabled devices so if you have a Chromecast in your home you can see right here I have two and those allow me to go in and manage the ambient settings now 
it's not always going to show up here. Not every device in your home is going to show up here. So it's kind of a discover page that's intended to let you learn about new functions. I don't use it a ton. I, I, you can come here anyways and learn about new functions and capabilities anyway. So let's skip over to browse where we have all of our different connected music and video applications. So you're able to actually go into different applications. This is the YouTube application. So it's pulling videos based on, well, I don't actually know because it's not like I watch anything about George W. Bush ever. But you know, you also have Netflix, which I've already connected and I'll show you how to do that later. Google Play Music, which we saw at the start of the setup process. And here's all the different services that I've connected. So you can see all those. And finally, there's more services at the bottom here that you can go ahead and add as well. So moving over to settings, up at the top, you can actually switch between different accounts and you're able to manage your Google Home with different accounts. You can attach them to different accounts and therefore that allows you to give friends or other people living with you access. Again, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. You can skip between your two homes. You can look at all of the local devices on your Wi-Fi network and you can that's just another shortcut basically back to that you can set up a device which is that add button again at the front and there's the settings button again so there's more settings down here we'll get to all that stuff here we're about to go through creating multi-room speaker groups and the settings for all of your devices so moving back now to the home page here i'm going to hit add and First, we're going to go through setup device. And the reason I'm doing that is I wanna show you how to connect another service. Now, I've already connected my Philips Hue in the home. This process is going to be fairly similar to what you're going to see me do, but I'm going to tap down here where it says, have something already set up. So this is where you go and you get your different connected devices in your home connected to your Google Home. So you can see already, I have a number of different devices here. What I haven't connected or what I haven't connected in the new way is called Harmony. Now Harmony, is essentially a TV control hub that allows you to control your cable and your DVD player or Blu-ray player and a bunch of different devices that work off of IR and you get a remote with it. So I use it quite a bit and so I'm going to tap on Harmony and now essentially what it's going to ask me to do is connect the two services by signing in. Keep in mind, I already have Harmony set up in my home. I already have the application worked out and that device is working in my home. Now, I used a Google account to connect and set up Logitech's Harmony Hub way long ago basically and now I just have to use that account. You might have to sign in with a username and a password. I just have to tap that button. So now I'm authorizing the connection of these two services and actually I have multiple Harmony Hubs in my home so I'm just gonna tap on change which one here just so you can see the full process. This is the screen you would get. It would allow you to choose your Harmony Hub. When you choose that you're just hitting the arrow up at the top and now these are all my activities that I've set up in the Harmony application. So same as Philips Hue or, or any service you're connecting here what you're going to see is the different things you've already set up. They're basically going to show you a summary and allow you to make slight modifications. Now, I'm not going to change the ability to watch TV. So, you know, if I want to say the wake word, turn on television, I want it to start the watch TV activity. So that's what this is saying in terms of harmony, but we're not going to get into the details there too deep. I've just got to hit the next button a couple of times and now I'm hitting link account and we're actually done that process. So now as I hit the done, what it does in the Google Home application is bring up the devices that I'm integrating. So what this means is, you know, for Philips Hue, you're going to see a bunch of bulbs. And for this, what you can see is my Sonos speakers connected to my Logitech, my 
my movie, game, Netflix, and TV, those are those activities that we just imported. And what I have to do here is actually physically can, uh, place these in rooms. So as I tap on game, I have to choose a home and then I have to choose a room. Now, my Harmony Hub is in the basement living room, so I'm just really going to choose that a number of times here. And the only exception to that is my Sono speaker is actually in a different room. So that's okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and choose that different room that it's in. And this is all I have to do with all my different devices. So here's my Sonos. This one's actually here in my office and I can go ahead, hit next. And my TV is the last one here. That's in the basement living room. And now I've completed the linking and setup process. I can undo some of these things. So what you're going to see is there in my basement living room, I now see those Harmony uh, devices, even though they're activities. And here's my TV, I'll go back into that. You can see I can change the name, I can change the home it's in, and I can change the room. And if I'd like, I can tap Unlink Harmony and go ahead and unlink that service as well. So that's really it. Now from there, let me show you how to go ahead and actually use that functionality. I'll show you a couple of different interfaces in terms of being able to control it with the Google Home Hub, your voice, or the visual interface here. Uh, on the device and or controlling it and I'll show you what Harmony is actually doing at that time. Turn on the TV. Sure, turning the TV on. All right, so let's go back into the ad screen here and let's create a speaker group. This is something that I think most people are going to want to do. I'm going to choose my new bedroom display and then I'll, I'll wanna choose another device that's in that room usually or you could have multi-room audio going on. So let's go ahead and add my standard Google Home to this as well. You could pick any number of devices basically and then you have to just give it a name. So let's call this the Office Group. and we just have to hit save, and that's the entire process for creating a multi-room audio group. So let me show you now, and we'll go back a little bit. You can see that new group way down here at the bottom of my home screen. There's the office group. Let me show you now, I'll go through a demo of voice control for getting multi-room audio groups to play, as well as just getting it to play standard. Uh, standard wise you know using your voice I'll also show you how to control it with the Google Home Hub interface the pull down interface for smart home control and I'll show you how to do it through your application whatever application you're using with a cast button on it so let's go through that right now now there's a couple of ways to go about playing media on either a Google Home Hub or another device. You can see the media button right here on the screen right now. If you tap into that, you're going to get access to all of your devices. You can go direct to them individually through that menu. Now, you can also go, once you go into rooms, you can also go into there and then you can choose either your lights and all your other control elements or you can go find your device. So as I go and I find my Google Home Hub here, I can tap into that and then I can just play music that way. And it is going to start kind of a, a random piece of music here. Playing some music on Google Play Music. Let's get out of this town, baby, we're on fire. Next song. Sort of wonder why no one said away. Play Foo Fighters. Okay, playing Foo Fighters on Google Play Music. Play Foo Fighters on YouTube Music. Alright, check out this Foo Fighters station on YouTube Music.
Fighters on Office Group? Sure, Foo Fighters from Google Play Music. Playing on Office Group. Back into the ad screen, this is where you can create a new home. Again, this more, what I would say this is more for, if you wanna split off and make sure your children only have access to controlling certain things in your home, say their lights in their room, but not the lights in the rest of the home, you can actually create a new home and pair those or put those items in that home and it will have a separate control scheme and capability. So you could do that if you'd like. Right now, let's kind of leave that. Let's go into the settings portion of the application now. So the first thing in settings is the name, the nickname for the home. That's that front screen thing again who's in the household so who have you invited in and again we'll we'll go back to that ad screen and do that invite process and I'll show you how that that changes here so back to add let's add a home member I'm going to choose someone you could put in a name or an email and now what you're doing is you're inviting them to control the devices you're inviting them to basically have their own voice match capability. You're inviting a whole bunch of things here. So media services like video, books, music, all of those things. And then they can manage your Google Home application just the same as you can. So, you know, people in general can utilize your Google Home device just by simply coming in and asking to turn on lights or turn off lights. But what you're giving them with this is to access all those controls and all those settings and really manage the home with you. So it's a different level. All you have to do is keep hitting view more until you get to the bottom and then you hit confirm and it sends an invitation out to that individual. Now until they accept it, they don't show up in the household there. So it's, you know, they have to accept that and then you've invited them into your household basically. Digital well-being is a relatively new feature. I've enabled it for some of my Google Assistant enabled devices or Google Home devices. What you can do is you can add downtime and filters for what's allowed to occur. So let's add a device filter to our bedroom display here. So we're just hitting next and I'm just going to choose that specific device, the bedroom display, and who is this filtered for? So is this filtered for everyone, or is this for guests and supervised accounts? So, you know, what we're going to see is, and, and this is expected in the world of automation over time, certain accounts have that ultimate administrator privilege and then others are just users and then others are less than users. So that's kind of what they're talking about here when they say only supervised accounts and guests. So, you know, personally, I don't want to filter the content for myself, but I don't want my child to be able to access restricted content on YouTube, for example, or Netflix. So 
you can see I'm choosing the bedroom display. And now do I allow any videos or am I only allowing filtered videos? So do I want to only play videos from YouTube kids if it's not me? That's what I'm choosing here. So I'm going to hit next. Now, do I allow only non-explicit music from all of these services? I could pick the different services. So if I wanted to keep one service that's able to do that, but my child would have to know what that service name is, I could do that. But right now I'm just going to filter all of that explicit service there. Now, additional controls. Do I want to allow calls or do I want to block all calls? Am I restricting different Google Assistant ad answers here to only allow certain things or only allow family friendly actions? So th this could really restrict the device in a lot of ways and I think over time the controls will get better but right now if you just want to restrict it in terms of other accounts or other guests so anyone that doesn't match your voice you can restrict all of these things on so you know in general I'd like to allow calls for my child I want him to be able to call me teach him how to do that let him call me on this device. I don't want to stop that from happening. So I'm going to leave those settings, but now I've created a filter for my bedroom display. You can see it right there. Now, in terms of downtime, I can hit a new schedule for downtime and I can set that up. And what it does is it blocks all music, video, and all the responses from the device. So it's basically turning it off or turning it into a dummy mode and allowing you to still use alarms and timers during that time. So that's really all you're going to be able to, to get out of the device at that time. So again, I'm just going to choose the bedroom display. I could choose multiple, and now I'm just hitting next. On school night, so you can choose kind of what schedule you could customize entirely at, and I'm going to choose a little later in the evening, 11 till six. This is basically a quiet device. So that's really digital well-being from Google right now. As I said, I think those features are going to get better and better as we go. In the account preferences, you know, there's really only a couple things I want to talk about here. You can manage email notifications and you'd think, okay, I don't want email notifications about anything, but you do get some good emails about the Google Home, the Assistant, and Chromecast, but you see that preview program right there? that gives you access to newer features. If it's not there, they're not accepting new people into the preview program, but for example, this allowed my Chromecast to be updated earlier than other people's Chromecast to allow me to include the Chromecast and multi-room audio before that was available publicly. So you do get some good features a little bit earlier and you won't have to be asking me when it's coming out if you turn that on. Now, the search and the watch history, that's where you can go and you can manage your what, what Google keeps. Uh, the Wi-Fi history, you can actually clear out accounts that you've saved to Google if you didn't want them to have that anymore. Locations, app settings, you can adjust those over time. You can kind of explore that. Now, the next thing down below the account preferences there, rooms, groups, and devices. So this is another way to interact with your different rooms. So we saw this earlier on the home screen there where we could go into the different rooms and actually manage, choose which devices are in there, delete those rooms if you'd like. But the other thing that's here is, you know, like is a group like other. And this shows you a lot of other devices. If they're not in a room, you're, they're going to show up here. But what it's actually showing me mostly is scenes and things from Philips Hue. So that capability is there as well. And then you can see local devices and speaker groups. And I can also go ahead and hit add again and I'm back to the same interface screen. So now down below the add, there's a create new home button, the ability to delete the home. So those are the, if you're creating other homes, homes within your Google Home application. You can go ahead and manage those there. There's the shopping list again, so you can go into it. You can add people again. You can share that shopping list with them. Again, that's probably going to change to Google Keep here. Here's another interface for voice match. You can remove your devices. You can invite other people or teach your assistant your voice again. Then you have the music and TV and video services again. So Here's your ability to add these different services again or remove them or unlink them for services like Spotify. 
again, we've already seen these things, so I'm not gonna sit in them for a long time. The video and photos is there again, but the more settings is really where the rubber's gonna hit the road here for us. So let's take some time and go through this. This is a big piece of what you're doing with your Google Home. First up is nickname, so you can actually change what the Google Assistant is calling you. You can test it out by hitting that play button as you adjust the nickname. Your work and home places here can be adjusted, so you can go ahead to put in where you where you work and where you live and that will allow a device like a Google Home Hub to actually navigate you there. So, you know, you get that screen and it actually shows you in the morning, this is how far you are from work, this is the route you're gonna take, and this is how long. So, some nice integration with Google Home, or Google Maps rather, there. So, I would, I would suggest you put in your home and your workplace, that helps with the routines, which I'll show you in a bit as well. How you get around, do you drive a car to get to work, do you drive a car when you're getting around in general, or do you walk or bike or take public transport? You can actually set that. Your people, family, and you know, important people, this is, I think what this is going to turn into is more than your people, more like, uh, what you've asked the device to remember. So what Google Home knows or knowledge about you. Uh, this basically, you know, when I want to say call the wife, I want to make sure that the Google Home device or Google Assistant enabled device knows that I want it to call my wife, which is a certain contact and a certain number. I, I can teach it birthdays. So let me show you how a little bit, how, how this works a little bit. Remember that Elizabeth's birthday is August 3rd? Do you mean the contact named Elizabeth? Yes. Now, that birthday was August 3rd, is that right? Yes. Okay, I'll remember that Elizabeth's birthday is August 3rd. Payments is another section here where you're able to start interacting with this device on a different level. So you can allow payments with your voice assistant. You can confirm your identity before paying, so that uses voice match. And then a fingerprint with a device like the iPhone I'm using, I can actually use my fingerprint to ensure so it actually triggers that on to my iPhone here. It sends a notification to my iPhone to confirm that I want to make this purchase. So it is a pretty a foolproof way of making purchases using your voice. You can do these purchases or make these purchases through the Google Store, for example, and there's other connected services that are being created all the time that allow you to shop with different vendors or different manufacturers. So you obviously have to put in a payment method and your delivery address to make that all work. Now, the weather, whether or not you wanna get it in Fahrenheit or Celsius, that's really all that's there. The reservations component takes you to kind of another Google service here, so it's kind of taking you out of the application a little bit. I don't have any reservations, but as Google Duplex becomes more and more popular and more heavily used, you can actually ask your device to go make a reservation and it's going to show up here. Now, the other thing down at the bottom is purchases, the physical purchases that you've made. These are not necessarily purchases that you've made with your Google Assistant enabled device, but it can be and those will show up here. It's all your purchases through that Google account that are showing up here. So the next section is the assistant section and this is where you start to get really detailed in managing your device. First up are languages and there's a difference here between a Google Home Mini and a Google Home Hub or a Google Home and a Google Home Hub or other smart displays here. When you pick your language for a smart display, it might be able to speak it, but it's not likely to be able to show it. So there's only certain languages, and you can see even English Canada won't work on some of your devices. That's actually referring to my smart displays. And as I change that second language here, so you can't actually get French as your primary language here and get it to work on a device like a Google Home Hub, but you can get it to work on a Google Home or a Google Home Mini. So 
you know, you have to be a little bit careful there, but you can set two languages in terms of speaking with the Google Assistant. Now the Assistant Voice, this is the, cap the capability of picking different voices that will actually uh, speak back to you. And it's by color right now. And as I choose them, it actually starts to play that voice. Now, as I choose, I always end up back at the, the main one or the main voice there, the red. But you can pick your voice and, and listen to those voices and see what you want to use. Continued conversation is a, a detailed uh, conversation here, actually, no pun intended. But continued conversations for a Google Home or a Google Home Mini or a Max, those devices, what it basically does is you ask a question or ask a query or, or give a command and the Google Assistant will respond. And if you turn on that continued conversation capability, what it will do is open the mic back up for seven or eight seconds. I'm not sure which it is, but seven or eight seconds, the mic will sit open and you can ask a follow-up question or a give a follow-up command. So if you're asking a question about an actor or actress or a person, you can follow up without saying their name again on that second part or that second question. Now on a smart display, this becomes a more complicated discussion and what happens is it will not open the mic back up, but you will also get a visual interface and the ability to ask follow-up questions along the bottom. So let me show you what that looks like on a smart display. Who is Scarlett Johansson? According to Wikipedia, Scarlett Ingrid Johansson is an American actress and singer. How old is she? She's 34 years old. Who is her husband? Roman Doriac and Ryan Reynolds. So I think you can see from that, there is a portion of continued conversations that is there. You can always ask the follow-up questions, even if you have to use the wake word again on a smart display, you ask those follow-up questions, but it doesn't leave the mic open. So one of the two components of continued conversation is always there on a smart display, no matter what that setting is, but you can only enable true continued conversations for a Google Home, a mini or a max right now. There's voice match, I'm not even going to go bother to go back into that. And the email updates, I'm not going to bother to go into that as well, but you can enable further updates. Home control, this is the old interface for home control and it allows you to manage by device per service. So you can see there's the Harmony service that we connected earlier and I can go in and I can manage that device. I can change its room, but this is an older interface and I would say you're not going to use this a ton. Also within the rooms here, and again, this is an older interface, but there is one useful thing I wanna show you. The ability to assign rooms in bulk here for all the devices that haven't been added to a room. Now, what I'll tell you is that it's also showing a ton of my routines from a service called you know me and all of the scenes from Philips Hue Samsung smart things all those different things are showing up here but you can edit per device and put them in a room now something like a scene you're probably not going to want to put in a room but you could if you'd like it kind of affects how the lights work so in general that home control portion there not something you're going to use unless you can't find the device on your home screen for any reason. Routines is something that needs a number of videos to build towards, but you know there are some ready-made routines. So the best example is the good morning routine, and this works with smart displays or just standard Google Home or Google Home Mini devices. You can see when I say X, good morning, or tell me about my day, or et cetera, et cetera, I can go and I can do all of these things. So you're seeing the weather, my commute, which again took the home and work uh, locations, tell me today's calendar, what's on there. You have to integrate your Google Calendar here. So that that is actually a critical piece to talk about. Today's calendar is only your Google Calendar. There's no way to integrate an iOS calendar right now other than by some back kind of backdoor methods. That again takes a whole other video to do that properly. 
and over time that capability has changed a little bit. So you're going to be using your Google Calendar, so I would download the Google Calendar app and use that same account again that you use to log into Google Home as you set up your device. Now you can adjust all your lights and plugs here so you can see I can change the device however I'd like. I can turn on certain ones, turn off certain ones, or don't change that device. I can also take phones off silent, but this only works with Android phones as of now. The other thing I can do, I can change the order of what things happen in. So, you know, that really doesn't affect a lot of things except things like the weather, the commute, or the calendar. It depends what you want to hear first there. And then if I want it at the end, I can play music, news, radio. I can configure those different sources and go ahead and manage those. So there was the news sources. You can add news sources here and give yourself that news instead of other news and rearrange which order you want it to go in as well there. Same thing for podcasts. So continue the last one or play the latest episode of a specific podcast. You've got to search for it and add it there. So you're able to do all of those things. There's also the music service. So you could ask for specific uh, playlists, uh, artists, song, genre, whatever you want. And it only will play your default music service there in this good morning routine. And then you just hit save here in the end. So that's those standard routines. But what you can also do is create a routine and you can do it by command or set a date and time. So the first thing with a command is you just have to say that after the wake word, but the setting of a day and time allows you to automate your your lights or your plugs or things like that. You can pick which days you want it to do it. You can pick which device you want to initiate this. So if you're playing music or or a service or something, you can pick that device and then you go back. So at 12 on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Google Assistant should. And here's where you can add a specific Google Assistant command. So you're not gonna see in the popular actions here, you're not going to see something like play a video from Netflix. Well, you can actually put that in. So if you wanted to start my videos every day at noon, my new video, then you'd be able to enter a Google Assistant command here to say play automate your life on YouTube and you could say on which display as well if you'd like or if you're initiating it from that display already in that previous screen it's going to play there so uh, again you can add those popular actions which you saw in the good morning routine but planning your day the here's the communication so broadcast I'm home so you could you could say when you walk in uh, the communication section here where you could say like broadcast that um, I'm on my way home whenever you're leaving work at a certain time. So you could trigger that through a Google Assistant. You can actually run your routines on Google Assistant. You can also adjust lots of your devices here. So you can put a phone on silent, but this is only working from an Android device again. So, and you can also make the assistant here on any device say something specific. So you can have it come back and say something specifically. Once you've done all that, you could add media as well. So that's the music, the news, podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. And you can play them all that way. So that's how you set up your own routines. Again, that's a pretty customized discussion or a longer discussion to have here. So we'll kind of leave routines there for today. Now down at the bottom, here are here's another interface for getting into some settings on your device. Inside a bedroom display here, you can see I have the device address, but then there's personal results and home screen and notifications. So those two things, you know, personal results is very, very important for getting your calendar, your contacts, being able to call those different people. And, and then there's the restriction mode. So you can kind of restrict certain content, uh, filter the content. There's my duo audio again. So this is actually the older interface for managing the devices again. So you're seeing in this assistance section, a number of things that are the older interface for managing things. But this is still a useful screen and what I want to show you now 
is flip over to the actual device settings that you would normally access and show you that. So we're going to go back here all the way to the home screen and I'm going to find my bedroom display, go in there and hit the gear icon up at the top. Now, let's go through all the different settings here. So linked accounts, if you had multiple accounts that were linked to this device and could manage that device, they show up there. The name you can adjust here, so you could do that in that other screen as well. You can change the home it's in, the room it's in, and you can add it to different groups. So if I wanna add it to multiple groups or take those away or create a new group, I can do that right here. I can change the Wi-Fi it's on and I can manage its digital well-being settings here directly on the device settings here. So there's the equalizer again and group delay correction. So if you're in, a, in your multi-room audio groups and you're noticing there's a delay, you have to synchronize the audio sometimes and it allows up to a 200 millisecond delay for each device. Now, you know, that's again, that's a more complex discussion. I have a Chromecast video that runs through a Chromecast uh, music playing video that runs through that a little bit better. The default speaker capability. So right here, you can go ahead and you can pair a Bluetooth speaker through this method. I'm going to show you how to enable Bluetooth there and then do the connection process for Bluetooth uh, right after this. But you can also choose your other devices or other groups. So if I wanted, I can choose that office group to be the default speaker. So I don't have to say every time when I'm asking it to play music, to play on the office group, I can just say, hey, play this music and it will play on that office group if I set it as the default speaker. So again, let's go through, let me show you how Bluetooth works here really quickly or how to set that up. And through a voice interface, I think that's actually more natural and then just using your phone. Enable Bluetooth. All right, looking for paired devices. Disable Bluetooth. Okay, Bluetooth is disconnected. The default TV, this is really the same thing. It's, it's really choosing which device is going to show the content. Now for a smart display, that's going to be what you choose most of the time. Which device do you want a YouTube video to play on? It's usually that same device. But you can actually choose your Chromecast or other Google Assistant enabled devices as your default TV. Now, alarms and timers in general here, very simplified where I am. You may have additional settings and I expect this to really grow over the year. We've heard the cartoon characters coming for kids and, and different things. So, you know, in general, for a smart display, you can manage those very well. They actually show the timers on them. Alarms in general, you're just setting them and then you're kind of forgetting that you've set that and how often you're setting it. But the display as well, these are some of the displays the specific settings for a Google Home Hub. So do you want the low light activation to begin when it's dim or when it's actually really dark? Uh, and during low light, what do you want to do? Do you want to actually turn off the screen when it's low light in your room or do you want to leave that clock interface that they have kind of naturally there? How? What's the minimum brightness you want? Do you want it completely dark or do you want it always to be relatively bright? And how long do you want the screen to remain there if there's no in if there's no activity there? So you can actually set that to five minutes and just have it turn off if nobody's interacting with the device. The ambient EQ, the auto brightness offset, allows you to adjust it a little brighter or a little dimmer depending on what you like to see in the device. So, you know, in a bedroom, I think in general you're gonna wanna adjust it a little dimmer. Uh, and then use some of those turn off features for brightness uh, and the screen timeout thing there. So color matching, 
do they want do you want that screen to actually move a little bit with the environment so that's a very very interesting adjustment capability here or setting adjustment capability but in general I would say these are just personal settings now the next thing is night mode you can turn on night mode which allows you to limit the volume of response here from specific time periods to other specific time periods. You can turn on the do not disturb mode which blocks reminders, broadcast messages, other notifications. You still get alarms and timers so just like before. And you can also set a maximum volume once you've gone into this night mode. So I've set that as 10 to 6 right now and for every day and turning on do not disturb mode right there so a lot like the digital well-being setting a little bit different here and allows you to manage it in a different way if you'd like do not disturb mode is just an on and off so you could turn that on at any time and that's if you just want this device to be never basically to never disturb you if you want it to kind of be a dumb device and only interact when you request it in terms of guest mode here this is where you're able to allow people to connect to the device using this pin. So they don't have to be on your Wi-Fi network, but they can basically use this device or use their smartphone or, or whatever they bring to your home and this pin to get connected to the Google Home Hub. So not something I think a lot of people are going to use, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But ambient mode is where things start to change a little bit. You can use Google Photos or this experimental mode. Now, if you choose Google Photos, the account you've actually connected, you, you use and the album show up here. But let me show you the art gallery. You can pick from a number of different groups basically so you can say earth and space I want to see and I want to see featured photos and you just go back and your device changes to that immediately now the experimental mode is where you can connect a Facebook account so I'm going to click Facebook and now I can choose the different albums that I have in that Facebook account and actually just choose to show those things at as much as I'd like so there you go you can choose that that's my account that I'm going to use and that's my album that I'm going to use and then the more settings do I want to show the weather the time do I want to show personal photo data so I usually like to hide that so it doesn't say my name on every everything and then how often do I want it to change I can actually make that adjustment now I'm going to take it back to the full screen clock just so just for the demo here, but that allows you to sit there and flip through different uh, photos and really it becomes a digital photo frame at that point. So the other things, uh, accessibility, and there's actually a lot of accessibility options here. Do you want it to play a start and end sound? So let me show you how that works. Just listening to the start sound and end sound. Okay, so screen reader, it will actually read what's coming on the screen. The color inversion can help people as well with accessibility. And then magnifying the screen with a triple tap, actually tapping on it three times. Closed captioning for video content, so you can actually turn that on for things like YouTube videos that you're playing on there. So those are accessibility features that a lot of people can use here. Now, Bluetooth, Here's again how you can enable that pairing mode that I showed you a little bit earlier. So you can do it this way and then go and actually connect your device. The time format, you can show a 12 or a 24 hour clock on there. Lower volume when listening. So this is when you actually use the wake word and something's already playing. So if you have music playing, it will actually lower that volume and listen. It helps with recognition of what you're saying. So I'd almost always turn that on. Letting others control your cast media. So if you've started something and it's playing, you can let other people connected. They have to be on your Wi-Fi and they have to be on an Android device to be able to actually affect that casted media. And there, there's the help improve home hub and how you remove the device. Now, down at the bottom though, here's the system firmware version, the cast firmware version, all the different things that are 
kind of pushed into this device. So you can see that cast firmware version, that's really impactful to what features you have and so is that language there. So those are things you wanna look at if you're missing features or you're unsure and then you go to the support website. So I think that's a pretty good run through of the settings in their entirety here for your Google Home or Google Assistant enabled device. Okay, so continuing on now back into the settings and I'm going to go all the way back to our Google Assistant settings here. So we've been through this entire list now, so let's move over to the services side. And you're going to see another couple of things here that we've seen in the past. And you can see how Google is giving you multiple ways to access the same thing so that you never get lost essentially. But I think sometimes it does make it a little bit complicated or complex to find things. The, the voice and video calls, so number one, if you want to make phone calls, this is the first thing. You have to link your own number or you can use an unlisted number. So you can add or change the number here. Go ahead, make that adjustment. Now, calls are only going to work in the US, Canada, and the UK right now. Other countries will be added as we go here, but it has been a long time actually since they rolled out this feature. They, they just haven't shown up in other countries as of yet. So I don't know when that's going to show up for you, but if you're in a country like the US, UK, or Canada, you can make these calls. Now, video and voice apps, this is back to Google Duo. And so you can see that I've already set up Duo video calling. If you didn't have that, this is where, and I'll show you how to do it here really quickly. I'm going to unlink my Duo account, and then I'm going to go back in here and link Google Duo. So I need to basically find my country. I'm in Canada and I have to type in my phone number. And because I've already set up that account in Google Duo, it's going to go out, find that account and utilize it right away. So you have to set up Google Duo prior to coming in here on either an iPhone or an iPad or a, an Android tablet or phone, it doesn't really matter. And then it's available on all Google Assistant displays. So that's how you set up both of those and I'll show you how to use both of those right now. Call Elizabeth. Sure, since this is your first call with your smart display, here are a couple of notes. First, emergency numbers aren't available. Next, you can tell me to hang up at the end of your call. Now, let's get started. Calling Elizabeth. Yes? Wow, you picked up. Can, can you hear me? Yep, you're as loud as can be. You're on a video right now, so I guess I'll let you go. Bye. Bye. Now, in order to get your Google Home Hub connected to Google Duo, you actually have to go back into that settings and the more settings screen and then find your device down at the bottom where it says assistant devices. You can see mine called the living room hub here. And when I go into that screen, I end up at the bottom of that setting screen, the duo audio call. And you can see the little chain link there that tells you you can link your account. So when you tap on that, you actually go through the process of linking Google Duo. Now, this requires the previous setting that we saw earlier in the video where you actually input the mobile and video and voice call setting and connect your Google Duo account. So you have to do both of those processes and then you can go ahead and utilize Google Duo through just asking the Google Home Hub to use Google Duo to call someone. Okay, so back to music. I don't need to show you this again. This is the third time that screen's shown up here through the application, but news, this we've only seen once before, but this is kind of a quicker path to the news sources. So when you ask for the news, these are the sources that are going to come up. Now you can change the order like, like many of the screens here. You can start with whatever you'd like and you can also delete through hit, hitting those X's, sorry, 
and you can add new news sources just by hitting add. There's not really a search function as of yet, but I'll tell you this has really expanded over the last year or so and I'm going to tell you that I think in general there's going to be a search function and a little more integration with the assistant store actually. Now you can see that was a technology section, here's a business section, so there are different section, sections that you can break down or, or go through in sections. So moving on to photos and videos, again we've seen this screen a few times so we don't need to go through that. Now moving down to TVs and speakers, this there's not a lot here but you can hit the ad and you're adding Google Cast devices so if you've added one of those like a Chromecast you can find it through that method as well in general I'd say you can just use that add button at the front to add devices like this as well but that shows you all your different TVs and speakers that you can use now the calendar function and uh, you know I mentioned this earlier it's really going to use your Google Calendar. So whatever account you've signed into is the account that shows up here. All you can do really is choose from those calendars that are integrated with Google Calendar. So let me show you that. Here, uh, and again, I'm using an iPhone. If you're using Android, this is a lot easier. But if you had multiple accounts added into here, you could use multiple um, Gmail accounts or Google accounts to manage your calendar there. So you can go ahead, you can add in extras of those, but as long as you've used that same account to set up your Google Home device or your Google Assistant enabled device with your, uh, your, your calendar there, you're going to be fine. It's going to use that calendar. After that, like I said, it gets a lot more complicated to integrate an iOS calendar with a Gmail calendar or a Google calendar, so separate video needs some separate treatment. Can't show you that here today. Now we're back to the shopping list. Again, this is just another shortcut here to the shopping list and your stocks are down here. Now that's again attached to your Google account. So you can see how all these services are attached to your Google accounts or for the most part they are. So you know if you add in stocks here you can just tap the add and then you're going to get those as you ask. Now obviously with something like stocks you can just ask for a specific stock from Google anyway so that's really just giving you hey my favorite stock so let's run through a couple of demos here we'll go through calendars we'll go through stocks we'll go through the news let me show you how some of these services are actually working add an event to my calendar what's the title of the event go to work all right, when is the event? Today at 9 p.m. All right, go to work today at 9 p.m. Do you want to save that? Yes. Okay, I saved your event. What do I have on my calendar for today? There's one entry today. At 9 p.m., you have go to work. Show my agenda for tomorrow. Sorry, I can't find anything on your calendar for then. What's the news? Here's the latest news. From CBC News, hourly edition, at 8 p.m. today. What's the stock price for Google? Alphabet Inc. Class A is trading at 1059 United States dollars and 68 cents per share. After so now let's just go over to the settings page here, the account page. And you know, I told you before this settings button we weren't really going to use and that's because it's straight to the same screen that we just came from. So it, everything's the same there. Now exploring the Google Assistant, I've hit before the music we've seen before, but the difference with the music here when you tap on it from a Google Assistant or you go in that from the Google Assistant app is a little bit important actually so I want to show you actually as you go into the Google Assistant here if you go and look for the music services here so I'm going to tap up at the top I'm going to go to services and I'm going to go to music now watch for the difference here so as I scroll down now you'll notice one difference down here here's Apple music and you see it only available on iOS devices 
and that's only available in the Google Assistant application. So no, you cannot use a Google Home Mini or a Google Home Hub and go direct to them and ask for Apple Music to play. However, here in the Google Assistant application, you have some ability to play Apple Music. So let me show you a couple instances of how that goes. You do have to do a little bit of extra work there. Once in there, you can see the different music services that are available. You could choose any one as the default. You could choose no default if you wanted. So down at the bottom, you're going to see Apple Music. Now I'm using an iOS 11.x device here that allows me to do all of this. So I have an updated Google Assistant application and my iPhone device is iOS 11. Now skipping over to the Google Assistant itself, all I have to do is tap on the little microphone icon at the bottom. I'm going to ask it to play royalty free music and you'll see the Assistant respond, sure, it's asking Apple Music. Now, let me show you, I'm going to mute the mic on my Google Home just so it doesn't trigger as I do this, but What's really funny about this demo is I'm actually connecting to an Amazon Echo Plus. I could do the same thing with the Google Home, and then I would also have the Google Home Alexa. and its capability for controlling Connect music. Connect to my phone. Searching. Now connected to Ryan's iPhone. Play royalty-free music on Apple Music. Next song. Volume down. Back in the Google Home application, the shopping list is the same as we've seen, my activity, and then more settings. Now, more settings taking you right back to that additional settings page where we had the three sections of personal info, assistant, and services. So really, in terms of the application, there's a little more down there, but you know, really in terms of the application, we're done here. So it's really time to show you all of the different functions on your Google Home Hub, go through all of that and show you how to interact with the device in conjunction with your phone. So the last thing I will tell you here in the Google Home application is this feedback button. And if you're wanting to send feedback, there's a couple of different ways and Google actually uses this. This is what they tell you to do all the time. They bring this feedback together and that's how they decide to add new features. So if you're really bothered by something here and you want to send them some feedback, here's your ability there. The other thing you can do is actually speak to your Google Home device or Google Assistant enabled device and go ahead and just say, I'd like to give some feedback or send feedback to Google and then it will ask you to proceed with your message to them. Now, just to give you an idea of some of the other functions you can do, you can ask for YouTube videos to be played on any Google Assistant enabled devices, but you can also ask for things like the weather, or the news. We've seen some of those functions here earlier in the video. It, there is a navigation for all the different functions as you just swipe through the device and then there are volume controls in the back that I didn't show you earlier here and then when you swipe up from the bottom you get brightness control you can turn off the automatic brightness or the automatic EQ brightness there and then you can adjust the brightness of the screen if you'd like there's also the volume function and that's the alarm volume function there so you can adjust those independently if you'd like like. There's a do not disturb mode that you can turn on and off from the bottom again and an alarm capability here without using your voice if you'd like. You can just swipe up from the bottom. Finally, that's an about screen that you can go into and read more about your device. You can also see the Wi-Fi account that you're connected to there. 
Now moving over to ambient mode in your device settings, you can actually tap into ambient mode and there is an experimental mode that allows you to connect to Facebook. Once you tap on that and you just have to tap in again to the Facebook account and then choose the albums that you'd like to utilize to just roll through. There are some other settings as well, like if you want to display the time and the weather and how fast you'd like to shift. Add an event to my calendar. In terms of calendar of integration, event? you can go ahead and add calendar events utilizing right. your event? voice and you can get information about Today those. So let's see PM. that go on. All right, go to work today at 9 p.m. Do you want to save that? Yes. Okay, I saved your event. What do I have on my calendar for today? There's one entry today. At 9 p.m., you have go to work. Show my agenda for tomorrow. Sorry, I can't find anything on your calendar for then. Another important function is the ability minutes. to add timers. So you can okay, just request a timer to start. Now. And the nice thing about the Google Home Hub is you get a visual interface for all of your added timers. So you can just continue minutes. to add and add and add. Second and you can also timer. name Second the different timers and that's starting as you now. go here to give yourself an indication of what the different timers are for. Set another timer for eight minutes. Third timer for eight minutes, starting now. Cancel all timers. Sure, I canceled both of them. There are reminders, so you can request a reminder at a specific Set a time. Reminder for eight forty-four p.m to finish filming and you will okay, get that remind reminder you, you get a little PM. notification on the google home hub and then after that you I've have to ask what your reminders Brian. are you have three reminders for today finish filming at 8 41 pm finish filming at 8 44 pm and finish filming at 8 45 pm Play relaxing sound. Of course, you can play relaxation sound. Playing and the nice thing about sounds. it is if you want to interact with the device, it will continue to play in the background, a lot like the music capabilities will as well. Show me a recipe for chocolate cookies. Now, one of the biggest features is the ability to sure, request recipes, recipes for things. And there is a cookbook feature that Before we start, should be on your device at the time you're degrees, watching Fahrenheit, this video. You can ask Celsius. for any recipe you know that you're, you're utilizing to actually be added to your cookbook. And then you can always reference that recipe in the future. There are nine ingredients. You can ask for the next ingredient or skip to the instructions. The first ingredient is one and a quarter cups margarine, softened. Next ingredient. The second ingredient is two cups white sugar. Two eggs. Skip to instructions. There's seven steps. I'll read them one by one. When you're ready to hear more, you can say next step. First step. Next step. Mix in walnuts. Stop cooking. All right, done. So there you have it, everyone. That's my full setup for the Google Home the Google Home Hub and you know all of, really this fits for all of the Google Assistant enabled products there's some minor differences tweaks uh, things like that or different tips but 
Ultimately, that's everything. That's all you need to know today. Of course, if there's anything else, please leave it down in the comments below. If you have other questions or other concerns that I didn't answer today, please do leave them down below. I'll get to them. And I try and answer every question or comment here on the channel. So go ahead, guys, leave them there and we'll get to them right away. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And of course, if you've liked this and you need more content like this, leave a like subscribe to the channel join up with us here and there are also links down below to stuff we're selling here on the channel of course if you'd like to support us so thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time